what is going on good people of youtube it is me chavez i am back with another nba player prop player prop talk live stream today is wednesday april 17th 2024 as always i hope this finds you doing well and in good spirits i'm looking at my camera and i feel like it's slightly tilted and now it's more tilted that's fine <clears throat> i'm okay with that what's up everybody i hope you're doing well this morning hope you feel good hope your taco tuesday was good if you avoided the anthony davis taco then you probably had a good taco tuesday if you played him like i did then you had a lot of chalk where is a damn eraser for all this goddamn chalk that we had yesterday all in all i thought it was a pretty decent day no big hits but no big losses couple of bad reads in uh, the MLB and NBA, but um, isn't that the case every single day? The goal here is to uh, sustain profit, sustain it every day, maintain it. Can't win big every day though, but we move on to a new day, uh, Wednesday, glizzy Wednesday, hot dog Wednesday, whatever, whatever we're calling this shit more promos today last week's promos were okay two out of three hit i think tanner bivy was the only hot dog strikeout prop that did not hit dylan cease hits and uh stroman stroman hit his uh strikeout props last week so hopefully this week yields us better results we'll go three and oh that'd be nice to have a back-to-back -back taco tuesday and hot dog wednesday with some profit but we move on hashtag blessed you all to know this by now but if you're new to the stream new to the channel we always talk about this as a nice intro into the stream over 10 percent of the u.s population dies in their sleep why am i telling you this well because it's true and number two if you're hearing this or seeing this then you did not die in your sleep so hashtag blessed see how it all came together value your day accordingly go do something nice for somebody go do something nice for yourself go do something good for somebody and yourself everybody always talks about doing nice things for other people which is fine but like when was the last time you did something good for yourself always looking at other people and how we can help other people but if you don't look out for yourself who is so treat yourself today maybe help somebody else too I think the ratio between helping yourself and helping somebody else, like one and one, one to one ratio. Yeah. Every time you extend your hand to help somebody, help yourself, treat yourself. It's a nice way to give back. I'm rambling here. I know. But hashtag blessed. That's what we uh, that's what we um, talk about here on the stream. If you're new to the stream, new to the channel, welcome. I appreciate you being here. Hit the like button on your way in. If you uh, are not new, hit the like button on your way in. Because it goes a long way in helping this channel reach new viewers every single day. The more eyes we get on the prize, the better. And we move on from death to turds, to herd of the day. We should have a couple of turds to talk about today. Hopefully not too many, but definitely a couple. What's going on, Ruben? Good morning, JR. What's up? Good morning. Blessed indeed. Turd of the day, Clay Effin Thompson. 32 minutes and scored as much as me and you. Good riddance, Clay. That was rough, man. I took the over on his three-point attempts because even if he did miss them, I was like, he's going to take them, right? Did, didn't even take that many. I think he took four or five. Just the way that guy walks, just the way he walks on the court, like in between plays, he just has like a very aggressive walk. It just makes me feel like he, like he's hard to get along with. Steve Kerr had to sit him down and talk about how bad his attitude was. <laughs> I mean, you're like 15 years into your career, and that's the first time you're hearing that. That shit is long overdue. But I'd be surprised if the Warriors maintained him. Um, we just saw him look so bad this season, and he brings very little to the to the team. I think even bringing him off the bench was just their way of trying to figure out how can we keep this guy and like. You know 
res respect the fact that he was part of our dynasty. I mean, honestly, if that was another player, I think he just would have been benched because it's Clay Thompson, Golden State great. You got to, you know, coddle that a little bit. But yeah, I don't think he's back next season. That team is going to look really different without him or maybe not. Yeah, Clay Thompson was a big turd. Anthony Davis is my turd yesterday. I, actually, Anthony Davis, I didn't like that taco to begin with. We talked about this yesterday. Austin Reeves was my favorite of those. I don't understand why people voted for Anthony Davis when Austin Reeves' PRA line got bumped. And now you have the opportunity to play it at a much lower line. Why Why would you not play the bump line at a, at a discount? That, to me, makes me feel like robots vote for those things but um anthony davis didn't like his point prop to begin with but at 20 i felt 20 and a half i felt like that was in play and he hooks it he slept walk through the first half like he does and then he comes out in the second half and just does enough but doesn't get over so he was a turd ranger suarez goes out and pitches a nine inning shutout doesn't give up one run strikes out eight batters took the under on his six and a half strikeouts thought he'd definitely get pulled after six innings then he stayed in and he was still in in the eighth inning and i just thought there's no way they're gonna take him out he has the opportunity to pitch a full game and then he just struck two two more batters out and that was it that really was tough to uh to watch unfold because i had him in uh in four slips that would have not been a nice hit on one of those 25 X's instead of a 10 X or instead of a double up, I should say. Ranger Suarez, Anthony Davis, those are my turds. You got Clay Thompson. Can we build out a turd, uh, a turd Rushmore here? We need one more, right? For a Rushmore, we need at least four. Yeah. What's up, T? I know every time we have a taco that doesn't hit, I always ask myself, why didn't you dig into that more and just look and play the under on his OG line? It could have been even worse. Sabonis was so close to not going over. He got that last minute dunk or was it free throws? He got last minute points with under five minutes left in the fourth quarter when that game was well in hand. And luckily, he stayed on the court just long enough to go over by 0.5. Wasn't his taco 15 and a half? He got a 16. Had he not had had he not gotten that one, oof, could have been a much worse night. But those are two examples of taking the under on the original line. Still, Austin, I, I don't remember the the full layout. It was uh, it was Anthony Davis, Austin Reeves. Brandon Ingram, CJ McCollum, were there, those the four? Uh, those are the four tacos, and they all sucked except for Austin Reeves. Brandon Ingram didn't even come close; wouldn't even gotten close to his points. McCollum, almost as bad a shooting night as Clay Thompson. So looking back at that, I still think Austin Reeves was the best one because he was just in the best position. I don't understand what happened with that taco voting, but I had the opportunity to not play Anthony Davis and I chose to play him. So that's my fault. I'll, I'll take the blame on that one, but man, sometimes that voting is just suspect. Let's move on. Injury news for today. These injury reports will be very small in the playoffs because most of the time you'll see starters play. They'll play hurt. They'll play through injury. They'll play tired. They'll play fatigued. They're playing. Um, Duncan Robinson is probable. Rozier is out. Melton is out. Jalen Johnson is out. Embiid, Martin, Drummond, Desumu are questionable. Um, I think they all play. Well, I think Embiid definitely plays. If he doesn't play, there's something seriously wrong with his knee, like worse than they're letting on. To bring him back and then he doesn't play in the play-in game, that's bad. That's real bad. We should see Zion on the next injury report. 
versus the uh, Lakers. Lakers? Kings versus the Kings. He may not even play that game. That sucks. I think they're uh, calling it a quad injury. It looked like he strained his groin the way he, the way he, uh, he jab stepped and then he drove and the way he hopped up, I felt like he strained his groin and those are tough because that's where all your push and leverage comes from when you're trying to like stop on a dime or make hard cuts or just trying to like take off with power. If he def if he plays, he's definitely not going to be. He's not even going to be eighty percent if he plays. That's a tough one. That's a tough one to play on, especially when you're as physical as he is. That dude is a beast. He looked so good yesterday too. He they couldn't stop him. He was he was unstoppable. That was fun to watch him play. We talked about Brandon Ingram yesterday too. Uh, rebounds and assists. We talked about his assists and uh, his demon rebounds. He hooked those. CJ McCollum was brought up later on in the stream, and we were looking at his points. Uh, and his 10 game logs looked great. But I brought up the fact that a lot of that production was done without Brandon Ingram on the floor. And when the, the Pelicans are 100% healthy, it's hard to uh, it's hard to pinpoint where that production is going to come from. But if Zion misses next game, I mean, you got to look at McCollum. You got to look at Ingram to step up. Those are going to be your first two. And then we'll hopefully see more of Trey Murphy without without Zion in. How about Jonas coming back from the dead yesterday? (laughs) Played only the first half. I don't think he played in the second half. He only played one rotation in the second half, but... He did enough to go over his PRA. He took the over on that one. That was a first half cash. But there's an injury report for today. Not too, uh, not too many names on that. Don't expect too many names moving forward. All the starters, all the uh, the first unit guys will definitely be be in unless they're on their deathbed. All right, let's move on. We'll talk about a couple of offers going on in the discord and then we'll get into some plays for today i have a few plays that i want to share with you that i like and then as always we'll take your questions we'll build out a few um not necessarily slips we'll build out a few rounds of player props break them down using props.cash and uh that'll be it send you off to enjoy the rest of your day first offer i want to talk about is the uh annual plan on props.cash we will use props.cash today in real time if you've never seen props.cash used before we'll use it in real time you'll get a one on one on one you'll get a uh, tutorial on how to how to use props.cash just based off how we use it here you'll get a really good idea what it offers Uh, this is exclusive to my discord only this is not on instagram or twitter or even on the props.cash mobile app or website Marking down their $199 annual plan to $149, it averages out to $12.49 per month, which is less than your monthly. So you're saving money. Yeah, it's more money up front, but uh, you're saving money. Money saved is money saved. Average savings of $90 when you do all that math. Again, Discord members only. So if you're in my Discord, doesn't matter which side you're on, freemium or premium, you're able to take advantage of this. All you got to do is DM me, let me know. And I'll get you set up. Easy. Second offer, 10 day pass, $9, $9.99. If you don't want to commit to a month or a year, check it out for 10 days. If you like what you see, then you can make a decision on that. But dollar a day, you'll make that up. You'll definitely make that up within the first couple of days. DM me. Let me know if this is something that interests you. I can get you set up today. You'll be in the premium just like that. Very easy. Moving on to today's plays, April 17th, 2024. We're talking NBA, we're talking MLB, whatever player prop you want to talk about, throw it in the chat. Prize picks, underdog, jock market, hot streak, sleeper, better, wherever you play. We'll be able to look it up over on props.cash. I lied. Last offer. 
last offer on props.cash if you don't want to sign up for the year you want to try it out for a month you can do that as well there is my promo code thanks 25 get yourself 25 percent off your first month on props.cash this one's been around for a minute this promo code has been around for over a year appreciate everyone who has signed up on props.cash using this promo code appreciate that very very much all right that's it for promos that's it for adverse advertisements 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 let's go let's talk about some player props we we're going to transition over to the prize picks dashboard now i said that we will talk about any player prop you want to talk about regardless of the format but we do use props we use prize picks desktop here on the stream for a few different reasons number one for presentation purposes it presents better it's clear it's bold it's easier to navigate uh all the information you need is in one spot it is the cleanest it is the cleanest uh format to navigate in my opinion but just let me know in the chat hey look up this play on underdog we'll look it up on props.cash and we'll let everybody know this is where you can find it underdog sleeper Hot Street, wherever you play. These are some player props that I had up on the board that I was looking into. All these are in great spots. Uh, the only one that we can't look up is Twist, which is a um, which is a CS2 play over 27 and a half first two map kills. The other ones we can look up: Lively over strikeouts, Kobe White under turnovers, Capella under rebounds, and Wicks under hits allowed. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and remove twist. And a lot of these are already on my cheat sheet in the discord. So you're kind of getting a glimpse into what I'm working on and what I'm trying to build out for today's plays, starting off with a few of these. So we got four on the board. Let's see if we got two questions in the chat. I'll take the first two that I see and I'll throw them on the board and we'll all go over to props.cash and research this shit together. People are stupid. Yeah, <laughs> we should have took the original less. Yes, 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 yes. Where did I see? Um, big icy anthony davis is like that x that's like i changed i promise i'm back baby i love you i'm back i've never had a girl tell me this shit but i'm just assuming like if it happened like that that's what she'd be saying oh i'll be better i promise and you let her back in and she's doing the same shit same shit <laughs> cj was awful man he and he looked pissed off too. He looked just, he looked, he looked depressed. I saw this funny tweet. It says that Clay Thompson was arrested for vandalizing houses in Sacramento with, uh, with, with all his bricks. I thought that was pretty funny. Over for 10. <laughs> oh for 10. Vandalizing houses by throwing bricks at houses. That's, that's pretty funny. T says, uh, or excuse me, Ruben says, and B struggles against Miami regardless. We're already getting some talk in the chat. What's going on, Divine? Jimmy Butler points and B threes. All right, I'm not going to get all those. I'm going to get a couple of those. Um, is that, are those are the first, those are the first props we have in the chat. Oh, no, no, no. Detmers over five and a half strikeouts. Detmer over five and a half strikeouts. Only downside is Pickham site started him at six instead of his actual line. I hadn't even looked at Detmers strikeout props. Let's check that out as our first play since that's the first first one I saw in the chat. So prize picks definitely has him at six, which is never, you never want to start at the bump. Remember, so anytime you see a player prop at a flat number 0.0, it's been moved up or down. 
So in this case, it's been moved up. The reason it's been moved up and the reason you can tell is that the 0.5 is what gives the 0.5 is what gives books, pick them sites, the leverage. Otherwise, if they just issued flat numbers, I don't think that much money would be made because you'd have a lot of players just landing right on that number. So they have to they have to give it that tipping point, which is the 0.5. But anytime you see the 0.0, it means it's been moved already. So Detmer's at six on uh, prize picks. On underdog, Detmer's is at six as well. You're going to have to search around for this one. I don't want to look through all these pick'em sites right now, but search Hot Street, search a shock market, search all these and see if you can find it at five and a half. We can throw it on the board if you want to take a look at it anyway. What demon props did we talk about yesterday? We talked about LeBron James demon assist. He hooked it at nine. I don't know where he finished on his threes. I feel like he didn't take too many threes yesterday. I feel like he was like, oh, for three. One for five. Jesus. So yeah, demon, demon LeBron did not, did not, uh, did not help us out yesterday. Demon Brandon Ingram did not help us out. Demon Jung Hoo Lee did not help us out. One for four with a single. All right, let's grab one of these plays that Devon wants to look at. Jimmy, I'm, I'm just going to take the first one that I see, which is Jimmy Butler points. I took the unders on some second half plays yesterday. I didn't really feel too comfortable with them. I was just kind of going by the first half and what I was looking at. I wish I had I wish I would have taken the under on Draymond Green PRA. That was the one that I was really surprised with. I thought we'd see a bigger push in the second half from the Warriors. Clay did get no, excuse me. Curry did get a little hot, but it wasn't enough to go over his fantasy or PRA in the second half. Sabonis so rarely, rarely crushes in the second half, and that continues. And he struggles with the Warriors anyway. And De'Aaron Fox had a good but not great game. Keon Ellis. Ke uh, Keon Ellis and Keegan Murray were your two big, big contributors on Sacramento. They stole the show. Ruben says, Hard Rock has the Detmers play at five and a half. Yeah, just another good example is if, if you don't have access to, if you have access to books, but don't play books, I'll, I'll keep telling you, there are a lot of good players on the books that you don't know about because they'll never make it to the pick them sites books do offer you the fairest lines they do give you the most options and the most alternate lines so if you have if you live in a state where you can access sports books when we say books that's what i mean sports books do it i don't have access to sports books so I try to do my best on the pick'em sites, and that's why I do shop around on a lot of different sites, and that's why I try to leverage and middle and do all these different tactics to uh, ensure that I'm setting myself up, setting myself up for success. Easy for me to say. Let's take a look at this Reed Detmer's five and a half strikeout prop. Who is he pitched for? Do you still pitch for the Angels? Yeah. All right, so don't let the smooth taste fool you. So it's really easy to look at these game logs and say, oh, fuck that, he's going over. Keep in mind, half of these games are from last season. These three are from this year. So let's narrow it down to the last five. Looks fantastic, right? If you look on prize picks, I wonder if they have his last season included. Let me hit you with some knowledge here real quick. All right, so if you're new to prize picks or if you're newer to sports, pick them sites. Looking at the last five game logs is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to research. When you look at the last five games on prize picks, it looks fantastic, right? 
five out of four out of five looks great however these games don't really these games don't count towards the regular season um well uh, not all of them do so it's like the last it's like the first three here boston boston baltimore i believe this was his first start now these two that's either uh spring training that's definitely spring training so just be careful when you look at these five game logs because this happens in nba as well where um when it's all-star rising stars those games get mixed into the last five and it'll either make the average look really bad which they play uh they use to their advantage or it makes their average look really good to where you're like oh man this guy's on fire and you're not really paying attention to what kind of game that was so just be on the lookout for that so last three games this is what we got here projected for six strikeouts so this is how important that bump is from five and a half he goes over with six but at six projections say a push is in play when you look at it at five and a half bet mgm fandle and caesars along with DraftKings, love the over minus 170 on DraftKings. is pinnacle in there pinnacle is minus 176 one two three four five books like the over at five and a half and then it just gets bumped up to six and a half on points bet so it's easy to look at this and say oh he got seven he, he'll get me seven again but what you're not factoring in is that you're playing a way inflated line at six and a half it doesn't matter if you think he can get the over this is becoming less valuable of a play the higher it gets bumped up at five and a half, that's a fantastic value. You play it over at six. You can consider it at six. He does need seven to get over, but push is in play. At six and a half, I'd probably just stay away from it because there's got to be a better strikeout prop out there than playing one that's been bumped twice. Tampa Bay has been whiffing at an alarmingly high rate this season. 24% whiff rate versus left-handed pitchers. Not too far off from where they were last season at 23.1. Yeah, if anybody can get six-plus strikeouts, it's Detmers. And it's not even so much that he's a great pitcher. This matchup presents itself really well. Start the year off. Gomber, <laughs> Austin Gomber, okay? Austin Gomber doubles up his strikeout prop. Patrick Sandoval, okay? These are not household names. This is not Spencer Strider and Tyler Glass now. These are mid-rotation guys. I think Detmers is in a good spot because the matchup is prime. His odds are in, are in play. His projections look good. Find it at five and a half first. Then you can consider playing it at six. I wouldn't touch it at six and a half. Go find another strikeout prop. All right. I guess we'll talk about a couple of my plays in the next round. Because I don't want to keep bouncing back and forth. We got a few NBA plays to take a look at today, right? We got Jimmy on the board. Um, Capella and uh, Kobe White. Now, Capella scares me a little bit because of his rebounds uh, without Jalen Johnson in there. But I saw a few things in my research this morning that really did make me like the over or like the under on it. Aside from it being a plus EV play, there are a lot of things that 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 contributed to it being a plus EV play. I'll share those with you here in a second, but let's look at Jimmy Butler. Let's find Jimmy Butler, first of all. Oh, where's Waldo looking ass? Can't find him in the damn player list over here. All right, so Jimmy Butler's points are at 23 and a half. Now, playoff Jimmy in regular season Jimmy. This is regular season Jimmy here. Two out of his last 10 regular season games, 20% hit rate. 
playoff Jimmy is slightly better. Five out of ten. When we look at his projections today, he is projected for 18 on a 23 and a half point line. Had to burp, had to sneak that one up so you didn't hear it. Points bet split. Caesars under. DraftKings under. Fandle under. Let's remove the playoff filter. And let's just look at head-to-head -head games versus the 76ers. Struggles against the 76ers. It just does. So one out of four games, he's gone over this. Do we have 70? Do we have playoff games versus the 76ers? No, we don't. We have not, nothing to look at there. Uh, listen, uh, the check, you know, the boxes we want to check here are, are positive projections, positive odds, and favorable game logs or matchup. We don't have any of those with this one. I think the odds on this one are slightly, but I think they're fair. I don't think they're bad or good. They're just kind of in the middle. Aside from Caesars really liking the under here, you're just getting kind of middle of the road odds here on the other books. This has a, you know, knock out, drag down vibe to it. It's playoff basketball, lower scoring. I mean, even look at the Lakers and Pelicans yesterday, 110 to 106. That's a low, that's a low total. Um, 212 total in the Warriors and, Sac and Sacramento blew them out. Still just barely over 220. Those are like average totals. And I don't think we see a huge total on this game. This could be a candidate for some unders in this game, but I guess if you're just a believer in Jimmy that he's going to turn it on and you want to attack him when he's the freshest and healthiest, this is the healthiest he'll be all playoffs. He's not going to get any healthier than he is today. Then you can look at that angle. But 24 points, uh, that's a pretty strong number. Is there any other prop for Jimmy Butler that we can look at that we could possibly uh, create a case for? I mean, I feel like we can create cases for the unders on him easily, but for the overs, 35.3 three-pointers, man. That's an, that's an under for sure. Steals and blocks. Uh, if you can find the steals and blocks somewhere, Probably going to be on a book. Definitely not going to be on the Pick'em site. This is one to look at throughout the day. I think this is a number that we see get bumped down at some point because people are just hammering the under on it. If you really want to play the over on Jimmy Butler, I don't think this is going to get any higher. So if you just want to wait it out and see if it gets bumped down to 22 and a half or even 23, that might be your best bet. Because this one is not going to get bumped. I don't believe people are playing the over on this one. All right. Let me show you what I was looking at for, um, for Clint Capella. And then we'll look at Kobe White. Under turnovers. All right. So Clint Capella, last... Um, Last five games to end the regular season, he was two out of five games going over. Now, he did hook it here. Last 10 games to end the regular season, three out of 10. Now, that front court was kind of all over the place with injuries and people being, you know, ruled out. Jalen Johnson missing a ton of games. Um, so... Okongu has been out for a while. Jalen Johnson was the one that was in and out the lineup. So when Jalen Johnson played, last 10 games that Jalen Johnson played, Capella went over in three out of those 10 games. Now, or excuse me, that's without Jalen. So let me rephrase that. 10 games played without Jalen Johnson, three out of 10. That's the case today. No Jalen Johnson. So 30% hit rate. 
when we factor in Jalen Johnson over the last 10 games, 30% hit rate, it's not having a huge impact on Clint Capella. It's just not. When you look at his projection, he's projected for about 11 rebounds, which is still a pretty strong number, but he needs 13 to go over. When you look at his head-to-head matchup with the Bulls during the regular season with Jalen Johnson, two out of five games he went over. Without Jalen Johnson, Johnson versus the Bulls, there is no history. So that's all we got to go on. So you're not getting favorable uh, favorable projections. You're not getting favorable game logs. You're not getting favorable odds on this one. You're getting a lot of unders, especially on Caesars, BetMGM, and PointsBet. Have it at minus 125 or more. And then if you do want to check out the playoffs for Clint Capella. Playoffs? Playoffs? We can talk about playoffs. Last 10 playoff games for Clint Capella. Just one game. Now, all these games were against Boston. But remember last year, Boston was a front court you could attack. We saw a lot of centers feast on the glass against Boston. They didn't have Porzingis. They had Rob Williams, who was often injured, in and out the lineup. Al Horford, he's not a threat in the paint. Clint Capella was unable to get over on his rebounding prop. So there are a lot of things to like for the under on Clint Capella. That's why I chose to go with his under today. I did have to dig into it because at first glance, I was like, what? That's crazy. He's going to go over that. It's Clint Capella. All right. So Kobe White turnovers. Now this one... I don't play a lot of turnover props, but when they pop up, when they pop up as a plus EV play, I do have to take a look at it because it's worth the time. So minus 139 to go under this turnover prop on Caesars, 140 on Bet MGM, 140 on points, but so you got three reputable, reputable books that like the under on this one. Projections also align very well with this one. So projected for two turnovers. I'm not saying he doesn't turn the ball over. Taking the under on somebody doesn't mean they get you zero. It just means they don't get go over. I used to think that when you took the under on somebody, that means you're wishing for them to have a bad game. No, it just means they don't go over that particular prop. And in this case, we're actually wanting Kobe White to have a good game. And keep the turnovers down. Last two playoff games, under. Last 10 games to end the regular season, he's gone over this in just two games. So that's an 80% hit rate for the under. Last five games, 60% hit rate for the under. On the year, Kobe White is a two turnover per game guy. So <clears throat> that one's standing out to me. That was pretty quick, short to the point. I like the under on Kobe White's turnovers. All right. Is Lopez still in the chat? Lopez, what do you think about Ben Lively strikeouts at three and a half? I'm going to pull that game up. Cleveland and Boston. So now I noticed this about Boston to start the year off, but the but the numbers weren't updating. It still showed last year's numbers, but I noticed that Boston was striking out at a super high rate. And now it's been updated on props.cash versus right-handed pitching. 25% strikeout rate. You got Ben Lively here with a strikeout prop of three and a half. Over on FanDuel, over on points bet, under on Caesars, 
under on bet mgm pinnacle likes the over this one's a little dicier it's not like unanimous unanimously over across the board he needs four strikeouts today I know these pitchers are not going over their strikeout prop, but they're going over today's strikeout prop. Over, 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 over. <laughs> BVP is not really there for this team because they've only faced him once. These numbers are from one game. Devers recorded a strikeout, so did Reese McGuire, Tristan Casas, Jaron Duran. Jaron, Jaron Duran, Jaron Duran, Emmanuel Valdez. Now, if all these were from the same game, that's a one, two, three, four, five, six strikeout game for Ben Lively. Now, I don't know if this was spread out over the course of a couple games, but these at bat totals feel like one game. It looks like he was in for about four plus innings, five innings. He went through the order twice. Was Devers leading off? And then after Devers, he got pulled? Some shit like that? I don't know. I'm just trying to figure out this uh, BVP. He needs four strikeouts today. We're not asking him to go out there and, and retire nine straight batters. I guess I could just look at his last game versus Boston. <laughs> he did have six strikeouts against Boston. Why do you make things difficult? Uh, so we just look at his last game versus Boston. Bang. Six strikeouts. Why am I guessing? Six strikeouts. He went almost six innings. He went five and two-thirds innings. Six strikeouts. No earned runs. And he allowed just four hits. If he gives us a similar game today, he crushes the over. If he gives us a, uh, a somewhat similar game, I think four strikeouts is definitely in play. I like the over on this one. All right. I'm going to go ahead and screenshot these. The only one I didn't check out was Jordan Wicks. We'll get rid of Lively, White, Capella, Detmers. I'm going to leave Jimmy up there. I'll put him in the next screenshot. All right. Appreciate y'all being here. 24 viewers on the stream. Thank y'all so much for being here. Hit that like button on your way in. Let's see what we got. Let's see what we got. Let's see what we got. I missed a lot. I missed a lot. Let's see. Jalen Rose. What's up, man? The Jalen Rose. Did y'all ever hear about that conspiracy or just whatever the urban legend, whatever that Jalen Rose is a robot, that he's not a real person. It was something to do with his eye. It was twitching on camera or it was blinking uncontrollably or something. And some, someone caught it. Uh, they're also talking about how perfect his hairline is. <laughs> so like no human being can have that great of an edge up. Jalen Rose, are you a robot? Marcus Stroman over pitching fantasy. Let's throw let's throw it up on a board. I saw an under for Marcus Stroman strikeouts today that I didn't really like because this guy can eat up innings. So if he's if he's pitching like six, seven innings, I feel like you just fall into four strikeouts. You know? You go through the lineup with three different times. There are four strikeouts there versus Toronto. Let's take a look at his fantasy score. What's going on, Robert Higgins? Embiid under RA. Welcome in. I briefly talked about this during the, uh, the minutes we spent looking up Jimmy Butler's points. In fact. But I think this is a game to make a case. Four unders. This doesn't have like 
a 240 point game total vibe why does anybody know why these stars are here i thought we were getting a promo yesterday when i started seeing these it's festive Is there something going on in the, uh, like with the eclipse this week? Is there something else going on? Was that last week? I think it was last week. There's something else going on with like Mercury retrograde or some shit. Is that why we got stars on the screen? Do I got to go out and charge my crystals now? Got to sage my apartment. What's going on, Jesus? Buenos dias to you, sir. Embiid over. We're getting some Embiid love today. So I'll tell you what. We'll look at a few different props for Embiid. That way we don't take we don't take up all the spaces on the board with Embiid props. But we'll look at a few different props when we go to props.cash. Uh, Bryce Miller under first inning runs allowed. Abbott and Bryce Miller under first inning runs allowed. Why not his assist? Are you talking about Jimmy Butler, Damian? Lopez says we took lively a lot last year at these low lines and Boston is a strikeout lineup. They are, especially with guys like Jaron Duran at the top of the lineup. I mean, Jaron Duran is a dynamic player. Once he gets on base, he's he's lights out, you know, but uh, boy, he whiffs. They whiff. I mean, this was a team that at one point had uh, Mookie Betts, Rafael Devers. I mean, yeah, two of the best hitters in the major leagues in the same lineup i mean that 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 line that one through five was potent for a long time it's hard to replace guy well devers is still there but it's hard to replace guys like mookie pets in your lineup ruben uh ruben's throwing out uh another first five under two and a half if you guys don't play these first five um props they're not available on prize picks or underdog but they are available on DraftKings. me and ruben are working on some uh, on some content to uh, to share with everybody since he has just been hitting these first five run totals consistently and once we get all that squared away i'll share that with everybody on the stream and then you can use my referral code to sign up on DraftKings. Take advantage of some bonus bets and win some money using our strategy for first five inning uh, run totals. If you're interested in making a little money. All right, uh, let's see. Oh, is that what it is, Jalen? Their 10% payout boost? Oh, shit. Okay. I missed that. Timothy Smith Maribel, what's up? If you uh, hits, oh okay, so you're just explaining it too. Got you, man. I need to, I need to be on Twitter more. Global warming in the <laughs> nice. Okay, I'll have to, I'll have to consider some of these. Hopefully they're not too shitty, but uh, we'll figure something out. Gotcha, gotcha. All right, appreciate y'all. Let me know. I had no idea. Obviously, I don't work for Prize Picks. So if I did, I'd be promoting the shit out of this, right? So if y'all ever had any reservations, like, do I work for Prize Picks? Because a lot of people feel like guys who create YouTube content work for Prize Picks or whatever. Like they try to get you to play certain plays to make Prize Picks money. I don't do that. So I'm definitely not a prize picks employee. Jimmy Butler assist. Okay, so Damien, were you talking about Jimmy Butler assist? Because uh, Timothy wants to talk about Jimmy Butler assist. You mentioned why not his assist. Uh, I didn't look at his assist. We did glance. We did kind of like scroll through it. Like looking at something that we could play in place of his points. But I guess if you're gunning for that 10% payout boost. I mean, if that's like the tipping point for you.
payout a payout boost on the rebounds for Jimmy Butler. Okay. I mean, these payout boosts do make a difference. So if you if you want to look at some props or the payout boost, we can do that. Just knowing that you get a little extra money if it cashes. That changes a few things. Encore says um, they are be cautious. They're promoting it for a reason in beat stats versus Miami. That's another thing. So just yeah, these are just like another version of the demons. Probably a little less risky, but definitely do your research on these. I know during the WNBA season, this happens. This particular thing happens a lot where they will, you know, do the discount taco, but. I saw it happen more in the WNBA where they were just discounting it down to the original line. Like if you go look at Bet365 or another sports book, they'd have like Jewel Lloyd's points at 15 and a half and Prize Picks was giving you the taco at 15 and a half, which is not really a discount. So if you're not really trying to look for those things, you'll miss them and you'll play some bad plays thinking that it's a good play. Prize Picks' main objective is to win money and make money for themselves. They don't really give a shit about padding your pockets. All right. Let's go. Can we get one more in here? Trey Young assist. All right, let's go Trey Young assist because I already have him beat on the board. And we'll look at a few different player props for him otherwise we just have a whole board full of Embiid all right this particular slip if we played it as is so I guess the payout boost is based off your entry amount. And this is what is it credited back to your promo promo funds? Because you're not getting a payout boost on your on your actual pay amounts here. Better better had that going on yesterday. Um 30 percent payout boost if you played such and such play max entry amount was ten dollars you do the math on that the max you could win is i think it was like three dollars extra all right let's knock out some of these nba plays appreciate y'all being here again hit that like button on your way in if you're sticking around Drop a question in the chat. Be sociable, but not obnoxious. Be engaging, but not domineering. All right, we're going to look at the under on Joel and Beach rebounds and assists at 16 and a half. So the first thing we're seeing here is back-to-back -back games of 19 plus rebounds and assists to end the season. Projected today for 14.7, so that's 15. Matchup with Miami has uh has been troubling for Joel Embiid. 0 for 3. Inclusive of one game this year. So remember, he missed like two months. There's a big gap in between these games. But just looking back at what he did, let's go back maybe last 30 games. Maybe that gives us a better picture because of all the time he missed. Over the last 30 games, which is not something we usually look at, but 15 out of 30 games, he went over this line, averaging 16.4. It's a toss-up. 
The matchup with Miami is a tough one. We all know that. I'm not really seeing a whole lot here that makes me like either side. It's just I, I can see you playing both sides on this one. I have not seen anything that's just clear cut. He does struggle against Miami, sure. He is coming back from injury. I don't think he's 100%. I think the 76ers uh, didn't rush his return, but they were kind of like with no left with no choice, you know? They're definitely not making it a run in the playoffs without him. So I don't think he's 100%. He's just gutting it out right now. DraftKings likes the over. Caesars likes the over. BetMGM likes the over. PointsBet likes the over. But there is a little juice to each side. Best odds in favor of the over on BetMGM. FanDuel likes the split. So you are getting favorable odds. You're just not getting the favorable projections, the favorable matchup, or the favorable game logs. Like I said, I think you can make a case for both sides on this one. There's enough information here to pick a side. It really is. I want to avoid personally doing the whole like subjective shit where it's like it's the playing tournament and Joel Embiid is the heart and soul of the 76ers and there's no way he's going to let his fans down like none of that shit matters. None of it matters. All that stuff is just opinion. I want to focus on facts and numbers that actually present. We think he and we definitely think he shows up today like that's a given but like to use that as a strategy like why well, i'm going to take the over on a player because he has to go out there and do it because he is the reigning mvp like none of that shit matters so again you can make a case for either the over or under on this one i personally would go i i would decide with the under because i just think this matchup is brutal for him. And I know he'll play hard and show up, but I still don't think he's 100%. We want to take a look at Jimmy Butler's assist. We did take a look at his points. If the payout boost changes your thought process on taking the over on his points, I understand that. But it's a 10% payout boost on any player prop with a star. So maybe pick a one, maybe pick a, a prop that actually grades out better. There still could be some strategy around it. If you're getting the same amount of money back on it, you know, look for the one that uh, offers the most upside. So his assist at minus 128 to the over. That is on FanDuel. DraftKings likes it slightly with 112 to the over. Caesars, 119. BetMGM, 120. Yeah, we definitely missed this one. When I was glancing through his stats, I didn't really pay attention to his to his assist. Yeah, I, so his odds on his assist are much better than the odds on his points. He is projected for 5.67 assists, so you are getting positive odds, positive projections. And in his history versus the uh, 76ers, two out of four games. Much better than his numbers uh, in terms of points. Yeah, his assists are just looking like the best out of the, the group of props he has. So if you want to throw that, throw that one in a slip, especially with the payout boost, it makes sense. Oh, there was another Embiid prop we were supposed to look at. His three-pointers made. We like the over on this one. Let's see. Since returning from injury here, four out of five games, but four straight games of two plus three pointers made. When we take a look at his odds here, points bet is split. Bet MGM likes it over. Caesars likes it over. DraftKings is split. FanDuel is split. Projected for 2.23 three pointers made today. Favorable odds, favorable projections, better game logs. Now his history against Miami remains something to uh, be improved upon, 
Although his last game against Miami, he knocked down three. If you're looking to take an over on Embiid, I don't think I don't think this one is a bad one. Miami on the year gave up the fewest uh gave up some, one of the lower three point percentages. They did allow 16 uh 13 three pointers made though per game. This used to be an area we could exploit with Miami. They improved it a little bit this season but it is still something that you can with the right player you can take advantage of so i don't mind that one for Embiid. if you want to look at his three pointers made that one looked pretty good that one looked better than taking the over on his 16 and a half points or rebounds and assists trey young assists sitting at 10 and a half this is giving you a payout boost a 10 percenter So Trey Young missed a lot of time as well. These are all games against Chicago here where he has feasted on Chicago with 13 plus assists over his last three games. When we take a look at his last 10 games now. This game against Charlotte was his first game back from injury. No, I'm lying. Was it the Boston game? I think it was the Boston game. He had no assist in that game. Is that is that accurate? Nah, I can't be accurate. What happened in that game? Against Boston? He didn't play in that game. I don't know why that's listed. It should even be listed. So these three games, two out of three games. To close out the regular season, 11 and 12. Two out of three games, he goes over. Today, he's projected for 10 assists. He needs 11 to get over on this one. Odds are in favor of the over on FanDuel. DraftKings, slightly on DraftKings. Caesars, BetMGM, and PointsBet. So, um, four out of five books like the over on this one. The projections... I don't think they're off. I think 10 is definitely a number in his in his uh, range, but we need him to get 11 today. And that's really not even on him. That's just on his teammates knocking down shots. He's averaging 15.2 potential assists over his last 10 games. Last three games, though, coming back, that's 39. That's 47. 47 divided by three is roughly 15. So yeah, his last three games after coming back from injury, he picked up right where he left off and went back to averaging 15 potential assists. Averaging 15 potential assists. And... Converting nine out of 15. I don't mind that one because you're getting good odds. You're getting okay projections, but good odds, good game logs. Numbers against Chicago are very good. So I think you can look at this one as well. I think this one gets bumped up to 11 at some point. So if you want to jump on that one before it gets bumped up, you can. I think that's a strong one. Strowman fantasy points. That's what we we're going to look at. All right. So breaking down fantasy score in the MLB is pretty simple for a pitcher. The three major contributors to a pitcher's fantasy score. Um, pitching outs, earn runs and strikeouts. Those are the three. Those are the three things that you start off with. That's kind of what your fantasy score is built on. Then you can add in quality start bonus. Then you can add in the win bonus. But you don't always get to get those. So the three things that are all are always going to be calculated for fantasy score, strikeouts, earn runs, and pitching outs. So if you can get close to or over that fantasy score on those three numbers, then you're in good shape. Then you can start adding in all the bonuses. So 
quality start bonus in the MLB for prize picks is four, and the win bonus is six. So if you have a pitcher that qualifies for both, slap on an additional 10 points. But you don't always get those. So let's look at his projections today. Let's see if we can break this down by his projection. So projected for 4.2 strikeouts, that's roughly four. That's 12 points. Projected to give up two earned runs, that's minus six. So that's give, that gives you a total of six points. And then his pitching outs, I said this guy can eat up innings. In his first three starts this season, he has ate up a good amount of innings. If he goes out and gets you six outs or six innings pitch, which is 18 outs, that's 18 points plus the six from the strikeouts minus earned runs, that's 24. Those numbers alone qualify for starting quality start bonus. So that's 28. So right there, he's at 28 fantasy points. His line is 26 and a half. If Marcus Stroman gives up two or less earn runs and go six plus innings he should definitely be in in contention for the overall fantasy points he will definitely get the quality star bonus now the yankees have to put up runs in order for stroman to get the win if they outscore the run the, the uh, blue jays while stroman is on the mound then that's an additional six points so he has the upside based off these numbers to get you roughly 32 fantasy points you with 33 if marcus stroman goes out there and gets blown the fuck up and gives up four earned runs goes six innings and strikes out four he's not getting it he's not getting anything so you're really hoping that this guy doesn't go out there and get blown up Okay, that he manages the game, that he at minimum gets you four strikeouts, and that he can last five and two thirds or more. That's what you need. For the quality star bonus, he needs to go six. So you're hoping for six innings pitch, really. There is a lot to factor into this, but this is what goes into creating a fantasy score. And the better you are at just projecting some of these numbers, the better your ranges will be. So then when you start seeing pitcher fantasy scores on prize picks or wherever, that number fits a range that you've already created, then you don't even have to think about it. If Stroman goes out there and gets you six plus strikeouts, you're good. I think you're, I think you're okay at that one. The good news is this matchup against the Blue Jays is a favorable one as they are striking out at a 22% rate versus right-handed pitching. So these are the numbers over the last four right-handed pitchers who faced them, okay? Luis Heel goes for six. Dakota Hudson goes for five. Feltner goes for four. Eight for Logan Gilbert. I mean, six for Luis Castillo. Again, Luis Heel. If Stroman falls anywhere between four and eight strikeouts, eight is kind of high, but it's possible. I think four to six is, is probable. I think four to five is likely. There are a lot of ways this can play out. I'm just trying to give you as much information as I can to help you understand how this shit can play out. So I think it's a good play. That's a low line. 24 and a half, 26 and a half. Ideally, what you want to see from Stroman is the Yankees get a lead. They go up 1-0, 2-0, something like that. And now he's pitching with the lead. Pitchers who pitch with the lead are more confident. Uh, they're not pressured. They're likely to stay in the game a little longer because the game is, is under control. You know, that's, that means less innings for the bullpen. You know, and so if, if that's going well, then... It's possible Strom is eating up innings just to give bullpen a little bit of rest. Right, Lopez? That's how that works. We talked about that yesterday. Bullpen uh, bullpen innings and bullpen uh, impact on the game. 
Jordan Wicks under five and a half hits allowed. Now this one, no, no, no. This one is still in play. Let's look at that one real quick. There was a good one. Keaton win under six and a half hits allowed. That one got bumped down to five and a half. So that one is not in play anymore. But um, let's take a look at this Jordan Wicks hits allowed. Now, this game against Arizona is, um, I mean, he's facing a pretty good team. Now, his first three starts of the year, he has gone over just once. So two out of three games, he's been able to keep those hits under six, which is exactly what we need for him today. He is projected to give up five hits. That's fine. That's fine. I don't expect him to go out there and throw a shutout. We just can't have him get blown up. Liking the under on this one, as long as it remains at five and a half. If this one got bumped up to six. That would worry me a little bit, but he definitely uh, he's in a spot to go under. Two books like the under at Caesars on uh, Caesars and BetMGM. I would love to have more data points here, but if you're going to get two books and only two books, why not have the odds average out to minus 140? Last time he played this team or pitched against this team, he only allowed four hits. Arizona not striking out a lot. Yeah, I, by no means is this going to be an easy matchup for him. But the odds are favorable. The projections are favorable. And to start off the year, we're seeing good things from him. It's also grading out as a plus EV play, which is above 54% chance to go to the hit. So that's also a positive. All right. So I personally, I think the under and Jimmy Butler's points makes sense, but I like the over on his assist. I like the over on his assist based off what we saw, and it is a uh, payout increase. Yeah, that one makes sense. Uh, Joel Embiid under his 16 and a half rebounds and assist, but also his three pointers made. And then Trey Young, the the assists look good for Trey Young. All right, let's do a few more player props. Let's go back to the chat. Let's see what we got going on here. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Yeah, promo funds. Okay, got it, got it. What's going on, Vu? Good morning. What's up, Jim the Judge? Got Embiid, sis, young assist. Or no, we didn't get Embiid and sis. We got Embiid points, RA, and three pointers. There's a lot of props for Embiid. Trevor Rogers over four and a half strikeouts. <laughs> Vu says just another weak prize picks promo. Jim says he's looking for Vucevic double double. Let's pull up. Uh, let's pull up his numbers. We can't look at double double props on prize picks. But what we can do is just take a look at his rebounds and, and points to see what those are going for and kind of figure out if there's a double double in there. Jesus. Uh, so he's projected for uh, not projected. He's he's get, been given a line of 32 and a half points and rebounds. Let's just throw it up on the board. So to get a double double, he needs 10 and 10, right? 
is there 10 and 10 in this, right? This can go a bunch of different ways. He can get you 25 points and eight rebounds. That gives you 33 PR, but doesn't give you double double. We can take a look at his game log to see what those double doubles look like for him. What's going on, Joey Miller? Good morning. Knuckles says, Joel Embiid first half PRA. I still need to put that Trevor, Trevor, Trevor Rogers up on the board. Damn, my prize picks. Look how slow that shit is, dude. It's raining here and it's super overcast right now. I think that has a lot to do with Wi-Fi connectivity. You would think by now, like this shit would be weatherproof. God forbid it's not a sunny day outside. What are you gonna do? Let's see, Ubre over points, over rebounds. What's going on, Seaver? Good to see you here. All right, let's see here. I hope today's games are competitive. The Lakers and uh, Pelicans game was, that was a really good game. Kings and Warriors, that one, that one got out of hand a little bit in the second half, but for the most part, I mean, it stay close enough to like stay interested in it. What is the uh, Uber's rebounds at five? 13 and a half and five. Um, yeah, we'll look at both of those on props.cash, but I'm only going to put one up on the board. So I save, so I save some room. <laughs> What's up, Ashley? And B first quarter points. I don't know if there's first quarter up on the board on price. Oh, there is. Okay, cool. We should have just did an MB segment because we're getting a ton of MB. Uh, he does not have a prop on price picks. We could look at his first quarter points, though. Buddy heel points. Damn, Divine. Divine, man, you be coming in with some attitude sometimes, bro. What's up, man? <laughs> You're all about correcting people, man. Do I even watch NBA? Clearly I do, man. Do you watch NBA, man? Buddy Hill points. Damn, his points are only seven and a half. All right, I still got to put Trevor Rogers up here. Let me um, let me go to MLB and throw up Trevor Rogers. That shit starts in forty eight minutes. <laughs> Jesus. That's a super early start. All right. All right. Let's go uh, props.cash. Let's look up Trevor Rogers first because that one's starting. And by the time we're done with the stream, it'll. Nah, we'll be done with the stream before then. But let's pull it up. All right. All right, minus 135 to go over his strikeout prop at four and a half. First start this year, 
three starts. It might just be two starts. I mean, this is this season, but I don't know if this was the last game. You can, I'll probably tell by his pitching outs. I think all these were first. Uh, I think all these were starts this year and not not spring training. All right, two out of uh, two out of three games he's gone over this. He is projected for four point two five strikeouts on the day, but Caesars, BetMGM points they all like the over. It's pretty unanimous across the board. Minus one forty four on Pinnacle, four and a half strikeouts. Matchup today with Miami. Or excuse me, matchup today with San Francisco. Miami is uh, the team he pitches for. So San Francisco striking out at a 20% rate versus lefties to start the year off. Now, these guys are not going over their prop, but they are going over today's prop. So it looks like five is the magic number when you go back um, even into last season. But just one lefty face this year. James Paxton got five, but they're just landing right on five. That's pretty much all you need today is five strikeouts for Rodgers to go over this one. This one looks good. He's only projected to get you about five innings, so it feels like five, not five innings. Yeah, five innings. It feels like five innings and, and five strikeouts. Like, so he's basically averaging a strikeout per inning, which is, I mean, that's exactly what he is, who he is. I like that one. I think that's a good one. All right. Um, We're going to look up Joel Embiid first half PRA and then also his first quarter points. Now, first quarter points is not available on prize picks. They don't have it up. So I don't even know what his line is. If if his line is eight and a half, and I guess you can play that over on underdog. If um, underdog, hot streak and jock market are three pick them sites that I know for sure have first quarter first quarter props. It's at nine and a half on underdog. Doesn't matter. At nine and a half, he's gone over. I mean, over his last 10 games, pre and post injury, he's gone over this. Against Miami. Back to back games versus Miami. Yeah. I mean, you can definitely make a case for that one. First half PRA. I wonder how many minutes we'll see him play today. He goes over first quarter points against Miami last game. Goes over first half PRA against Miami. Four straight games of going over this. Go back to his last 10 games pre-post injury. 80% hit right here. Man, it's hard. It's hard to see this. It's hard to see these game logs and not like the over. It is. It looks really good, especially the, because the matchup is tough for him. But the first half doesn't seem to be a bad start to to the game. The end game totals may not be there, but he's showing up in the first half. If we want to take a look at Ubre, we'll take a look at Ubre's points, and then we'll take a look at um, Buddy Hill's points at seven and a half. Buddy Hill was in, he was he was on a nice little roll with all the injuries, and then people started getting healthy and coming back, and he kind of took a back seat, but he was a pretty strong addition, especially with all the injuries. All right, so I think Ubre's points are at 13 and a half. We could take a look at 13 and a half on Caesars. 
minus 131, minus 112 on DraftKings, minus 125 on BetMGM, and then minus 125 on points bet. FanDuel had it at 12 and a half. That's a super low line. But at 13 and a half, he's gone over this in his last one, two, three, four, five, six games, six out of seven games versus Miami. 86% hit rate over his last 10 games. 80% hit rate over his last five games. 80% hit rate. Let's just um, make sure we're factoring in Embiid. Yeah. MB does soak up a lot of usage, but he he also opens things up for a lot of players on the team. So while you would think that with him back that a lot of players don't hit their props, it it helps them in some cases. Also, Kelly Oubre's rebounds were at five. This has been bumped up from four and a half to five. But if you want to play it at five, it's still in play as he's gone over in four out of his last five games. Perfect hit rate against Miami with just one game. With Embiid. This is with Embiid. Without Embiid, just whatever the lineup, a little bit better, right? But still, good hit rate. That one's in a pretty strong spot. You're getting favorable projections across the board. And in terms of his rebounds at five and a half, many books don't like the over. But man, look at the number on BetMGM. Minus 160 to go over at four and a half. I think the better line was Fandle four and a half, giving you minus 148. So that's a pretty strong line. That to me is telling me that he doesn't just get you five, that is closer to six. So at five, I think it's still in play. I think those are pretty strong. Uh, Buddy Healed. Seven and a half points for Buddy Heald. Wow, what a fall. Okay, good. <laughs> for a second there, I thought the last game log was what was going to pop up. I thought that was his game. His, his point totals. That was ugly. All right, so, man, this is super low. Uh, is he just not expected to get a lot of minutes today? Is he just not expected to get a lot of rotation? I don't know. Playoffs are a different are a different thing. I would assume he's heavily involved in the offense. He's not a you know he's not a end of the bench guy. Eight out of the last ten games, he's gone over this uh, versus Miami. Over his last um, ten games to end the regular season, sixty percent hit rate. That's still very strong. Sixty over his last five. Why is his number so low? Projected for 10 points? That's fine. We only need eight. FanDuel likes the over. DraftKings likes the over. BetMGM and PointsBet all like the over on this one at four. Uh, those are all, excuse me. Um, that's four books. I like the over. Pretty, uh, pretty convincingly too. With a pretty strong odds. God, Lee, I can't, I can't figure out why this one is only projected for, uh, only given, being given a seven point five line. His minutes have been a little low. If he got you fifteen minutes today, that'd be, that'd be, it'd be hard for me to think he got, he gets you the over on this one because that's. In 15 minutes, that's just very low. But if he's getting you anywhere over 21 minutes, 22 minutes in today's game. And he could go ice cold and not hit anything. We've seen that happen before. He'll shoot himself into a slump, basically. But if he's if he's adequate from the field, I think I think eight points is in is in play. That one's so that one's low. All right, let's figure out Vucevic double double here because if you're playing this on Fandle, this one could be in play. Double double, he just needs 10 and 10. 
he is projected for 19.5 points and nine rebounds. So this is a good example of him um, having a good game, but not necessarily getting a double double. Now his points and rebounds prop on Prize Picks is 32 and a half. He's projected for 28.8 points and rebounds. And that breaks down to basically 20 and 9. That's 29. So he needs... I don't think points will be a problem for him. Rebounds. If Drummond is out today, I'm sure that'll lead to more minutes for Vooch. I don't know how many. But I don't think it hurts his upside. If Drummond is in, that may hurt his upside. Drummond right now is currently questionable. So let's look at his numbers speci uh, specifically against Chicago. So we just need 10 rebounds from him today. Four straight games of 10 plus rebounds. He doesn't have to go over 10. He just needs to get you 10 against Atlanta four straight against Atlanta and then points he needs 10 he's gotten you 10 or more points in five games against Atlanta missing one so I think the double doubles in play his rebound prop today is 11 and a half and the odds do favor the over on this one Across the books, all of them like the over. So they're saying that they like him to get 12 rebounds today. We don't need 12 from him to get a double-double. You just need 10. So four straight games. So yeah, if you want to play the over on his double-double, I think it makes sense. I would probably take the double-double prop over his points and rebounds prop. Because it's possible for him to get a double-double today and not go over 32 PR. I think that's in play. All right. We are an hour and, hour and a half into the stream. We just broke down. So I don't really like his... I don't want to confuse people with this one because we were just looking at his uh, PR. So I don't want people to see this in a screenshot and think that I like the over on his points and rebounds. So I'm, I'm going to take that one off. But those of you have who have watched the stream know that we like the double-double. Unfortunately, I can't pull up a double-double prop on prize picks. Like the over Joel and B 24 and a half PRA. Like the over on Ubre's 13 and a half points. I feel like this is a trap, right? Am I missing something on Buddy Healed? Why is it so low? And why is all the information supporting the over? Like heavily supporting the over. Trevor Rogers over pitcher strikeout. Yeah, I like all those for the over. Oh, also Joel Embiid first quarter points, but we can't view that on prize picks because they don't have his first quarter point prop up. So if you're playing that on underdog or wherever you're playing it, we looked at it at nine and a half and it looked good at nine and a half. If you can find it at eight and a half, that's, e that's an even better line at eight and a half. So, all right. What else we got? Oh, shit. Damien, I, I just, I'm seeing your message, man. Um, I'm not even paying attention to the, wait, what did you say? The six point, oh, the six star props are the 60% boost. Man, I gotta I gotta research these uh these props, man. These uh these stars. 
All right, let's do a couple more and then we'll dip out of here, guys. Appreciate y'all being here. Truly, truly appreciate the uh, support. Chopping it up. Oh, Lopez says, Weathers uh, yesterday against San Francisco had 10 strikeouts left-handed. Another left-handed, uh, another left-handed pitcher destroying San Francisco. <laughs> All right. Joey, Embiid over first quarter points, nine and a half over. Based off what we saw, the over nine and a half. If you can find it at eight and a half, that's even better. Does Contreras have a home run prop on prize picks, Ashley? He does. Let's look at that one. We have not looked at a home run prop today. Um, I know, right? <laughs> I feel you, Damien. You want to look up some BAM, JR? Let's look up some BAM. Let's see Bam stats, points, and rebounds. The combo points and rebounds are separately. Well, let's look at his points. He needs 18, and then he needs 12, so that's 30. That He needs 30 points and rebounds to go over these separately. And then his PR is what? His PR is only 28? Are y'all seeing that? So he needs 18 points. He needs 12 rebounds. That's 30. And then you're getting his points and rebounds at 28 and a half. So that's 29. So you're getting it at a, at a one point rebound discount. And now it's cool. It's cool, Ashley. I wasn't sure if, if William Contreras is up. He's up on, on prize picks, so we can look him up anyway. So we're getting a decent line on Bam's points and rebounds. Let's, let's look these two up real quick because... I have a feeling that price picks is going to correct that. If you want to just throw that in the slip right now and then cancel it after we break this down, you can just lock it in. But it's not very often that we get that discrepancy between the, the two single props and then the combo prop. Usually they're they're the same. So BAM... Uh, points and rebounds 28 and a half and this one is showing at 28 and a half so we're not getting any different line here he is projected for 24 the odds on this one are under on points bet they're under on DraftKings, Fanduel, and well not bet mgm that's a higher line but not by much the juice is not that great it's even odds on DraftKings, even odds on Caesars. This one, this one is in play. The odds are not really favoring either side. The projections are crap, but projections are subjective and they vary from site to site. Four straight games are going under. Head-to-head -head matchup with Embiid. Well, we don't know if they're all with Embiid. So let's make sure Embiid is in this game. So in match in games played versus Embiid, he's 0 for 3. Just regular season games, normal games, he's gone over this in four out of ten. Playoff bam is a thing. We've seen it, we've seen it be a thing. I mean, finals, maybe it's finals bam. Maybe not playoff bam. Maybe it's NBA finals bam. Five straight games of 30 plus PR. Prior to that, he went five straight of going under. If you're an opportunistic better and you just want to take the over on this one because it's a solid line and you're getting it at a discount, that makes 100% sense to me. 
But if you feel like there's one category where he's going to suffer in, maybe you look to take the under on that one. He needs 18 points. 18 points versus Philadelphia. Oops. With Joel Embiid in the lineup. 0 for 3. He has gone over rebounds in one game versus Embiid. So if you wanted to look at the under on his points. And then the over on his points and rebounds. I'm just trying to think of a way you can correlate these discrepancies. But I think that points and rebounds is a is a good line. I have a feeling they're going to correct that here in a sec. Not a second, but at some point. Let's take a look at Williams. Uh, Williams. William Contreras' home run prop. Plus 330 to go over this one. He has three, four home runs in the last 10 games all this season. He is projected for 0.2 home runs. So you're never going to get positive odds on home runs. Like, like how we see for hitch runs and RBIs and things like that. So a couple of things that I pay attention to are definitely the odds. And then game logs too. But the odds will tell you more than game logs will. Usually the game logs are baked into the odds already. So if there's one thing to look at, be the odds. Then the next thing would be BVP, just plate appearances versus that, that pitcher. So three plate appearances versus Michael King. He is 0 for 3. So it looks like just one game for Contreras versus King. Now, versus right-handed pitching, Contreras is a much better hitter. Is striking out at a high rate versus righties, though, at 22%. Drawing walks 10% of the time. Last season versus righties, seven homers, 262 batting average. A little bit better versus lefties with that lefty-righty split. Start the season off this year. <laughs> All four of his home runs have come against right-handed pitching. 15 singles and four, or excuse me, three doubles. Batting 400 with a 273 ISO. I mean, the numbers against righties this season are there that do support the over on the home run. You do have favorable odds. I mean, plus 330, those are, I mean, sometimes you see home run props like plus 1,000, plus 1,200. I mean, you're never going to see minus 150 to go over a home run. Like those are never going to be a thing. Definitely not on pick 'em site. So, it is a risk because number one, home runs aren't home runs aren't happening at every at bat. But also, it is a demon prop, so it is just a riskier play in general. You aren't able to take the under on something. Anything you can't take an under on is much riskier because that site is forcing you to pick it for the over. So it's risky, but it is a payout boost. So if you put that in a slip uh, and it's a home run, so those, pay, those payout boosts are very, very strong. And you go from a 3X to a 6X. So you're doubling up your payout. So a typical $10 entry on this would give you $30 payout. This one's giving you a 60. So it's a much better payout, but it is riskier. I would, I would suggest putting it into a flex of any sort because you're getting a payout boost. You don't necessarily have to put it into a five or six pick flex, which is ideal for like long-term profitability. Because of that payout boost, you're getting a four and a half X. You could even flex a three pick, which under normal circumstances is a terrible payout. But this one is grading out pretty well. If you put a fourth play in here with that payout boost 
for the home run. Your uh, your standard payout for a four pick flex is a five X, and now you're getting a thirteen X. So what you really want to do is figure out what's my maximum payout boost and minimal plays. Like what can I play for the most amount of money with the least amount of risk? A five or six pick flex is much riskier than a four pick flex. Even if Contreras does not hit a home run today, but let's say these three go over, you're still getting a decent payout boost. And it is a payout boost, even if Contreras doesn't hit. So, or you can just say, fuck it. I'm just going to throw it in a power play and see what happens and go for the 20X. You can do that too. But um, the payout boost, you can use to your advantage. And you don't even have to have it hit in order for you to get the payout. So, it is a risk, but if you're going to take a risk, make it calculated and, um, make it worth it all right let's take the rosen out of here and booch all right so yeah Contreras versus righties this season has crushed four home runs looks good bam really liking the i'm really liking the difference we're getting between his pr and just his normal lines for points and rebounds we're getting a nice discount it is going to be corrected here pretty soon, I'm sure. Uh, his PR will get bumped up to 29. So if you like it now, it's not going to get any lower. If it did get lower, then I think that's an even better play. For Bam. All right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I think I think that's going to do it. We're an hour and 48 minutes in to the stream. We covered how many player props did we cover? One, two, three, four, five, five, almost five rounds of player props, close to five rounds. And we covered like a lot of Embiid. So I think we like covered all of Embiid's player props today. <laughs> Aaron Judge over a single at 0.5 for a 1.25x on underdog. Man, they're really dogging out Aaron Judge. When they give you payout boost on a play, it's more it's it's likely to not hit, which is why they're making it a payout boost, making it more enticing to play the over. And underdog is giving you a 1.25x on a single because Aaron Judge is a um, he's a four bagger. Like he's a two plus bagger player, meaning doubles, triples, RB, uh, and home runs. Like power hitters typically don't hit a lot of singles. So it's tricky because he can have a great, great game and hit a home run and drive in four RBIs and go under a single and you lose that prop. So those are pretty risky, especially for players like Aaron Judge. Or he can just go out there and strike out three times and not even give you a shot. So. They are risky, but it is, uh, those are always worth kicking around. Now, on underdog, when you play a playout boost, they will not let you flex it. Or they will not let you insure it. So as soon as you put a playout boost in there, I believe that they, um, that you have to play uninsured which is oh no they'll let you play standard oh i think it's i think it's the uh the promos right jim when underdog has the promos in there for like 0.5 points or something like that you can't flex that you got to play it out so okay cool so yeah you can still flex that if you wanted to ensure your slip on underdog it's only a 7x versus the traditional um 10x but it's profit if you feel like that's going to hit. 
Ruben says Cincinnati hasn't scored a run in the first inning all year. No run first inning. Add it to a slip. Add it to a slip if you can. Can we even add that to a slip under no run first innings or no run first inning allowed? There you go. Nah, not on prize picks. Not on prize picks. All right. I'm just scrolling the chat real quick, real quick, real quick. I can't get enough player props. Dane Dunning over strikeouts. That one was asked by Jalen. It's at five now. Did you like it at four and a half? It's been bumped, right? And then... This is a different one. Turnovers in the playoffs might be something to look at. If you get turnovers for uh, role players, players that don't have the ball in their hand a lot, limits the opportunity for turnovers. I know it's a low line. And as soon as he gets one turnover, it's done. But it's low for a reason. So let's look this up real quick. Let's look up Batum turnovers. Man, Batum was a beast when he was in Portland. For a split second, it was uh, Wesley Matthews, Damian Lillard, Nick Batum, LaMarcus Aldridge. And like a few different role players, but that was your core. That was a nice, uh, that was a nice young, young squad. He's not turning the ball over a lot. I mean, when he turns the ball over, it's, it's two or more. Okay, fine. But that's only four out of the last 10 games. So he's gone under 0.5 turnovers. And a lot of that is just due to him not being a high usage player. He's not usually he's not likely to get you 30 plus. I don't think so today. Unless unless Nick Nurse just tightens the shit out of his rotation. I'm sure he'll see his fair share because he is a he's a good defender. I mean, this is gonna be a slow paced game, I think. But yeah, this one does make sense to me. Now his projections are looking at 0.28 so that's closer to zero than it is to 0.5 or one so this one is looking good for for the under now for turnovers you typically won't get a ton of books that play these odds but you do have two good ones in caesars and bet mgm that like the under minus 127 and minus 130 so oh that one looks good that's a good one, T. All right. Last one. Dane Dunning under strikeouts. Under, excuse me, over, right? Over, Jalen? Uh, you liked it at four and a half. So if you, if you played it at four and a half, this one looks great. The odds on four and a half are 140, 148, 155, and 160 to go over on Caesars, DraftKings, and FanDuel, BetMGM as well. Now, once it gets bumped up to five and a half, you're going to start seeing those odds shift the other way. I think at five, it's in play because at four and a half, he does need five. So at, at worst, on at a five line, it pushes. You definitely don't want to play for a push. So you're hoping he can get you six. So if you're playing it at five, you're telling yourself he's going to get me six. If you don't see enough data to support six strikeouts, then it's not worth playing at five. That's how you can look at that. 
instead of looking at it like it's only a 0.5 bump ask yourself can this player do i see this player getting x amount and if you don't have enough information there to say yes it's not worth playing two games three games versus the tigers he has six and ten and then he got blown up looks like in that game giving up five earned runs not a coincidence when he keeps the earned runs down the strikeouts are up at least against the tigers so find it at four and a half it's in play if you want to play it at five you have to tell yourself and find the information that supports six strikeouts because that's what he needs but i think four and a half was is in play for him only because i saw this in the chat so many times and i didn't get to it joel and beat joel and beat over assist why not i mean we're playing every other one of his lines it's at five on underdog Let's look at it at five. So at five, he's gone over this or pushed it in five out of his last 10 games. But since returning from injury, very good numbers. Damn near 10. Games played with Tyrese Maxey. Last 10 games played with Tyrese Maxey. He's gone over this in four out of 10 games when Tyrese is not in the lineup. Four. There's no, there's no real big difference. He either gets you five assists or he doesn't. It's when Maxey's out, he's not going for 15 assists. When Maxey's in, he's not going for zero assists. He's playing his game. If the opportunity there is... If it's, if it's there to dish, he's going to dish. I know he ball hogs a lot when he has a mismatch and when he wants to take it over, but he, he is kind of an unselfish player. Like He has no problem dishing it and giving it out if he's being double teamed, unless he's just on one. So against Miami, let's remove that. Just overall against Miami, three games against Miami, he's gone under in three straight games. So you have this matchup that presents a problem for him. Though you have game logs that do like the over four and a half. If you can still find it at four and a half, five is okay, but he needs six. He never lands on six. He gets you five or seven. So think about that one. Again, if you can find it at four and a half, that's your best line at five. You need to find enough information to say he's going to get me six today. Do we need to look at playoff Joel Embiid in terms of assist? Probably don't want to because the numbers suck. So again, I don't really see anything here that's really loving this at five. Four and a half is the obvious best line. But the matchup against Miami is gross. <laughs> it's gross. Honestly, out of all the Embiid picks we looked at today, I'm surprisingly on board with his first quarter and first half. I typically don't like playing first quarter, first half because they're so condensed. Like, you know, it's such a short, short. It's, it's just a shorter leash. But for a guy like Joel Embiid, who he eats against the Miami Heat during the first half and overall. Those are looking like the best plays for me, honestly. So I'm glad y'all brought those up because I wasn't on those at first. Those are pretty strong plays. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, that is it. Joel Embiid under, what's going on to LA? Says uh, Joel Embiid under 34 points, trust me. 4Ks is the sweet spot for any pitcher. If he goes away over, if he goes way over, fuck it. 92% of pitchers that people bet on will hit that line. Yeah. Four is a, like four or four and a half is that spot, man. 
yeah i've learned over time that any pitcher prop that's slated to go under four no matter how plus ev it is um it is worth digging into and and doing some reverse engineering on those because there's a lot of information within that it's definitely um it's definitely that spot where I feel like you're going through that rotation one time and that second rotation, you know, it's, it's hard to think a pitcher can't get you four strikeouts unless they give up five, six earned runs. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is going to do it two hours in. I told myself every stream, not going to go two hours today. And then every stream we go two hours, but, um, I guess the balance is out because we're only live streaming Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. We're taking Mondays off, Thursdays off, and Sundays off. However, I will say that as the playoffs get into the thick of things and we start getting into the Eastern Western Conference finals and whatnot, as more relevant games are played on Sunday, I will be bringing the live stream back to Sundays so that we can dig into this shit together because it is uh, at that point like an NFL Sunday where all the games are being played on one day. You got to be got to be on board. So at some point we'll bring back the live stream on Sunday. But for now, we go live on Tuesday, Wednesdays, Fridays and Saturdays. So that means tomorrow there will be no live stream. I will be active in the discord. So if you want to hit me up in the discord, go ahead and do so the link is in the video description um but we'll be back friday 9 a.m with another player prop talk live stream i hope this live stream helped you out hope did uh hope it helped shine light on plays or just helped you in some way uh, maybe you fade these plays maybe you tell them or maybe somebody says something in the chat that you uh that caught your eye and and now you're just smarter for it so that's it appreciate y'all being here hit that like button on your way out think about subbing up to the channel definitely consider sharing this with somebody you know um hope all of your player props respect the damn coin once again i will be back to no i will be back friday 9 a.m with another live stream hit me up in the discord let's see y'all in the discord let's chop it up uh i share my picks and slips and all sorts of shit in the discord freemium and premium so other whichever side you're on i'm really trying to provide value for everybody but um i'll let the it, the outro beat roll a little bit for you all and until friday's live player prop talk live stream chavez is out